Now that we know there is no collusion, President Trump and his legal team are calling it an investigation into the investigators. So what's next for the members of Congress to look into? Joining us now, a member of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Mark Meadows, and ranking member of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Jim Jordan. And if you want to know why President uh, Trump was able to sustain this fight, it was because of these two gentlemen had a lot to do with that. First off, uh, individually, your reaction to the four-page conclusion that we all read yesterday, Jim? Well, I think, remember four numbers, 19, 40, 500, and 2,800. 19 lawyers, most of them Clinton Democrat lawyers, uh, 40 FBI agents, 500 search warrants, and 2,800 subpoenas over 22 months. And the findings come back and they say what? No more indictments coming, no sealed indictments, no collusion, no obstruction. This is as strong a statement as you can see. This is good for the president. More importantly, it's good for the country. Yeah, we're going to roll the full screen in, and it's a similar stats of 2,800 subpoenas, 500 witnesses, uh, a cost of between 25 and $40 million. Uh, Mark, you talked to the president probably as much as anybody on the Hill. Uh, how much has this weighed down on him and affected him? Well, I mean, it's weighed down on him from doing his job. I mean, you've got a president who loves this country, who's committed to this country, and yet each and every day there were lies after lies after lies told about him. You know, and, and some by uh, in the media, yeah. but some by Adam Schiff and Jerry Nadler, the same people that are going to try to switch the narrative and say, oh, well, this is not an exoneration. I can tell you it's a total vindication of the president, but it's not just for the president. It is indeed for the American people who trusted this president, who voted for him, and that now can say to the mainstream media, you know, why have you lied to us for two years? It's about time. Yeah, here is uh, Jerry Nadler yesterday. He didn't miss his opportunity to go to the streets of New York, get heckled, and speak out. We will ask the Attorney General to testify before the House Judiciary Committee. We will demand the release of the full report. The Attorney General's comments make it clear that Congress must step in to get the truth and provide full transparency to the American people. So, uh, uh, Brian, as predicted. Brian, you know, Brian, one of the big things, you hear Jerry Nadler there. If he wants to get to the truth, let's bring in Glenn Simpson, who started this with a fake dossier, who actually has claimed the fifth. Let's go ahead and bring in a lot of the, the individuals who put this false narrative out there. If we really want to get to the truth, let's be about right. the truth. Uh, Brian, Mike, Mark's exactly right. 81 letters Jerry Nadler sent out because this wasn't the bombshell they hoped for. In fact, it was just the opposite, the Mueller report. So they, they're starting a whole new fishing ex expedition. 81 letters to 60 different people, but two key people he didn't send a letter to. He didn't send one to Glenn Simpson, and he didn't send one to Christopher Steele, the foreigner hired by the Clinton right. campaign to write the dossier that was the basis uh, for this whole twisted deal. Before I let you go, I want to bounce something off you a little bit different. The Investor Business Daily does this headline that captured my attention. It says, Obama, Hillary, and Brennan combined to take down Trump, and in it they have this quote, James Clapper to Anderson Cooper, CNN. If it weren't for President Obama, we might not have done the intelligence community assessment that we did that set up a whole sequence of events that are still unfolding today, including special counsel Robert Mueller. President Obama is responsible for that. It was he who tasked us to do that intelligence community assessment in the first place. He was trying to credit Obama, but what in retrospect did he do? Well, we do know, based on certain text messages and, and actually meetings that took place between the Department of Justice, the intel community, and indeed the White House, that there was uh, an involvement at the highest levels of government. That being said, it, it requires further investigation to make sure that we do that, that we do not weaponize the intelligence community, the Department of Justice, or the FBI. And I, right. I know Jim and I are committed to getting to the bottom of it. And I'm going to have one question try to end on a positive note. Hakeem Jeffries, I'll paraphrase. He says, I am going to search hard to find common grounds to work with the president. Uh, do you believe Good. him, Jim? Well, let, let's, let's hope so. Uh, it doesn't sound like Mr. Nadler is looking to do that. It doesn't sound like Mr. Schiff is looking to do that. It doesn't sound like Chairman Cummings is looking to do that. So I appreciate what Mr. Jeffries has said, and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we can find some common ground, deal with the crisis on the border, build the border security wall, do some things mm -hmm. that need to be done to deal with our debt situation. Right. Let's hope we can. And by the way, that's what people are saying at home. They're over this Russian thing. Yep. They're talking about prescription drugs. They're talking about health care. And they're talking about uh, immigration. Guys, thanks I so agree. much. I appreciate it. All right. Great Thank to you, see Brian. you today. And the president really earns you a debt of gratitude for standing by him.